Alabama for a homegoing celebration of his aunt. For Sister Vivian Lee on the transition of her niece, Lakia Lee, a dear friend. Nor continue, continue to touch the homes of Liddell Bell and Ike Harrison, Sylvia Golden, Percy McCram, Cheryl Taylor, our first baby, Cynthia Lee and Pastor. For those on Zoom and live streaming and others that we may not know of this morning. For Brother Alex, who is back home. For you are a God of restoration and renewal. We thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your discouraged and defeated. Rather than forgiven and victorious.
verses 1 through 8 from the NIV version. Subtitle, The Beginning of the Good News About Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. After me, I'm not the one, but after me, the one more powerful than I. Just imagine. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop that time you with water. But he will baptize you with what? The Holy Spirit. For this is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Amen. Please remain standing for that page 881. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, sovereign of conscious power, was crucified. He ascended to heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And then to come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and praise God.
my wife together and all that stuff. And I'm up early to get here huh, for church. Even though I'm here before, most people are still late to me. <laughs> we get ready for church and we come in and there's a worship moment. And we just sit there and stare well from the blue like the Lord hasn't done something for you on just this week. Church. Guess what? Worship is not a spectator sport. Worship is not something that we just look at and say, oh. See, when we when we become uh, more than just uh, Sunday morning saints, we will worship doesn't start when I open up that door on, on Sunday, but Worship starts at home. Man, I was up early. I got sitting together, and before I walk out the door, I forgot that I didn't pray with my wife. I started praying, praying over over Cindy, and started just worshiping God. And that believed in, in divine healing. They believe in all that stuff seriously. But I also know that this. Uh, I'm like the, the three Hebrew boys. If he doesn't do it, guess what? He still got. Says that one comes great and that's the 
God is doing in our lives. I'm so excited about what God is doing in the lives of people. We are on the brink of something that is great. I had the opportunity uh, to be on Strengthening the Black Church uh, training yesterday. What, do you know what that training was called? About what is missing in our churches. I think it was about three or four hours. And they talked about the right and the left. Not the right and the left in a political sense. But the right and the left of what side are you going to be on the boat? They talked about how people will be shutting down because they're on the left side and they haven't got on the right side yet. They talked about how churches are not keeping up with technology. Churches aren't keeping up with what's going on. We're not being fishers of men and we're being more internal than external. Are y'all hearing me talk? But what the question? What side are we going to be on? We got TVs going up. Y'all saying, uh, y'all saying, oh, what's going on here? Asking questions. Well, what's going on here? We, we're getting, we're getting with what's happening right now. There's so many churches that are ahead of us, and we got to get, we got to catch up. This is about building the kingdom of God. Man, they said so, so, so much stuff on there yesterday. But one of the key things that they said that I've been saying, I, I said to my church 14 years ago that I was pastoring. If you need to miss us. And, but what, it's hard to take this, but they would not miss us because we haven't done enough in the community. But that's about to change, amen? Because we got to be a servant of God. Not a servant of ourselves. Not once. And when we get to the place that what that we that we really seek the face of God, we really what the scripture talks about here is we really repent. Because see that's the problem. You know, we haven't really repented. See that's that's some old school preaching there. Repenting. We don't we don't talk about repenting. We talk forgiveness, but some of us need to just flat out repent. Now, I got a good sermon preaching, but when the Holy Spirit, it, 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 he said, the one's coming greater, it's flowing, you just got to let the Holy Spirit let you go to sometimes. I want what I want from us as, as Buttonwood is to start to engage with your church more. Let's not just be Sunday morning saints. But let's be saints that are growing. And the younger saints, and the younger saints need to teach the older saints. See, y'all, y'all don't, some of y'all don't believe that. Y'all, some of y'all just, they had a, they had a big discussion about that on, online uh, yesterday. One dude said, I, the older saints, the young people can't teach me nothing. Well, it's a lot to be taught. Half, half of uh, us older folk, uh, well, I'm not going to put myself in that category quite yet. But <laughs> half, there is a lot to be taught. A lot of the younger people are more educated than a lot of people would be because they, they done went to college and got doctor's degrees and got master's degrees. There's a lot of wisdom and a lot of stuff that you can be, that you can be taught by somebody that's younger than you. Guess what, y'all? Jesus was 
something new. Guess what? There is something wrong with something new. But maybe you need to change your thinking and open it up to the new. I don't know who I'm talking to on today. I don't know what's in your life that you have been going through because the new does not just apply to this church, but the new applies to your life in general. But think about your life. This verse begins and it says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I'm not done preaching already. I, Lord, I'm going to say what he wanted to say. <laughs> the name I gave to my sermon on today is God's work, God's way. God's work, God's way. I'm going to keep on saying it. God's work, God's way. God's work, your way doesn't work. God's work, our way doesn't work. God's way, his way doesn't work. But God's work, God's way always works. This be a question that we ask who is this and this comes the question that the disciples ask even among themselves after witnessing Jesus who then is this that even the winds in the sea obey this is the question that Mark in this gospel. Who is Jesus of Nazareth? We find the answer in the opening verse. Jesus is the Christ. The Son. Halfway through the book we hear it again in Peter's confession. You are the Christ. At the end of the book, we hear it was well from the lips of the Roman centurion. Truly, this man was the Son of God. After this verse, we'll explain the good news that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, behold, on the second verse, I send my message before your face. Who will prepare you your way? The voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Prepare begins by quoting two passages from the Old Testament to refer not to the coming, not to the coming Messiah, but to the one who will prepare the way. The Messiah. This God promised to Adam and Eve in the garden that seed of the woman one day would crush the head of the seed of the serpent. Genesis 3 was being prepared. Jesus later, Jesus will later explain to his disciples in Luke the Gospel uh, that in fact, much of what was written in the Old Testament was written to prepare his way. And now, the moment has arrived. God sends one final message to prepare for the arrival of the Messiah. He's crying out to others to make the way for the coming of the King. Verse 4, John 
peers, baptized in the wilderness and proclaiming the and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem, Jerusalem being baptized by him in the river Jordan and confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and wore a leather belt. Man, that guy, he was been fly. <laughs> he ate locusts and wild honey. He was tough, y'all. Come on, man, because I'm not eating, I'm not eating lo locusts and all that stuff. And he preached saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you in the water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It is a strange thing that God would choose to communicate his truth and love through incomplete and imperfect people like us. As a pastor, I am reminded each Sunday morning as I stand before Buttonwood, as I stand before this congregation, both of the weight and the magnitude of delivering God's word to his people and at the same time of my own limits and my own imperfections. See, wouldn't it be better for God to send an angel or some to, 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 to uh, 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 unencumbered by the trapping of the flesh and the world? Wouldn't it be better for him just to send an angel down here? And yet, this is not how God operates. He communicates his perfect truth through imperfect people. There is nobody in here that can say you're perfect. No matter how much you want to be perfect, no matter how many times you try to be with the perfect, nobody in here is perfect. The only person that is perfect is Jesus Christ himself. Man 
and the message, and I'll be done. John the man, John was a remarkable man for many reasons, not least of least of which was his physical appearance. Now John was clothed with what? Camel's hair. And wore a leather belt around his waist. And ate locusts. And while John that amongst those born of women, none is greater. We were given a brief description of John. If he were to show up in our days, rest in his garbs and eating bugs and honey, we would at least find him a little strange. It might be strange in his own days as well. Ordinary people did not dress this way. No, John was making a deliberate statement by taking up the dress and dial associated with the prophets. Especially his attire would be called to the mind of Elijah. Who we were told in 2 Kings 1 and 8 wore a garment of about his weight. And it was dressing crazy. <laughs> Many today, particularly the younger generation, scorn the prophecy more than any other voice and prize authentically more than and they prize authenticity more than the other virtues in the life. They can sniff out fake people from a mile away. We are often all living in what cultural observes such as cultural observers such as Tim Keller and Kevin uh, and Kevin T. Most young people know when you fake and know when you read. <laughs> and while there is much to be eliminated in a culture that allows you to do whatever you want to do because that's what that culture does, uh, the truth is that they recognize truth when they see it and they never recognize when someone is real. I mean, I've heard the young people say, listen, keep it real. But the problem is most people don't keep it real. And then when you do keep it real with them, they get mad with you. Am I right or wrong? So we have to temper what we say to people because they don't really want the truth. See, the truth hurts sometimes, don't it? The truth hurts sometimes. People are killing, watching our lives, everybody. See, we claim to be true is consistent with how we live, then they can get with you. And so, we have a double opportunity to bodily live out and articulate our faith through our authenticity. I believe today's generation would have admired John the Baptist evenly with what he preached. There was an authentic passion John embodies as the crowds came out to hear him. In John's message in Mark, typically fashions, we are given just the basic information about John's ministry. It says John appeared, baptized in the wilderness, and proclaimed baptism of repentance. John arrives on the scene, not preaching in the village, in other common gathering, but John was in the wilderness and away from the population, the center of, uh, 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 of this day. This is what we would call nowadays, he was preaching in the sticks, y'all. Uh, he, he was pushing the boondocks. You, you get what I'm 
what I'm saying? The boonies. <laughs> That's where John, the back countryside in the bush, he was out there. And, and, and the people, uh, the people the boonies, just to hear what the man of God had to say. And what did John have to say? What is the message that he had for them? records a line from one of these sermons. You 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 brought you you brought the vipers. You you he warned you not to flee from the repentance. Now I know it's been two whole millenniums since John preached that sermon, but in case you didn't know when someone called you a brother viper with a that would not hardly be a compliment at all. In order to call people to repentance, John needs to explain why repentance is necessary. We repent because of sin. To our potential, it is a failing to live up to God's law. Therefore, sin is not committed against ourselves, but rather against the holy God whose righteous anger burns against the injustice and evil in the good world he created. If John were alive today, he would tell us that it is only from the wrath of God for sin. John's message was a message of repentance. And what was the response to his direct message and his confrontational approach? Scripture says in 1 and 5, it says, And all the country of Judea, and, and we're being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. His response when he said to them, repent, they said, well, we're going to repent, and we're going to go get baptized. As I close this message, John makes clear that Baptism is incomplete. It is a baptism done with water only. There is one who is greater who will arrive. When Jesus arrives, he will say, Believe. These actions go together. Turn from your sins and place your faith in the Savior of sinners. Tim Keller put these two together well when he writes the gospel is this. We are more than we ever dared believe. Yet at the very same time we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared hope. What does he mean? The meaning of this is that we are more loved by the one and only Jesus Christ. As I close this message, we better make sure that we are living a life of repentance. But John doesn't say the Messiah is coming now. He says, John doesn't say uh, the Messiah is coming. Now get yourself together. No, he says what? Repent. Your life is not together. There is no sense in pretending for repent 
and accept Christ. As we make room Jesus for Jesus in our lives, we all must do the same. We must repent. The path to Jesus is not found through perfection, but rather through repentance.
prepare for communion, we want to remember what our communion symbolizes. Um, communion is in our faith, our introduction to this life with Christ. As we go into our Holy Communion, the great Thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of the we give birth to your church deliver us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this, and when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this. All of you, this is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in the union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit's gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And the Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. There, through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is Amen. You may take bread. This is the symbolization of the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may not eat. Pull back the receptor. Symbolization of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you may now take and drink. After they had the Lord's Supper, they went up on the mountain and they 
began to sing a hymn. One day when I was lost,
slash does through uh, Facebook, um, at 7 o'clock p.m. on Monday, 6 o'clock, is quite a rehearsal. Anything changes, I'll send out. Okay. 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 Um, Tuesday, 7 p.m. is our administrative board meeting, and your Zoom um, link will be sent out to you today in reference to that. Um, we also want to remind you that on uh, Sunday, December 18th, will be our Christmas brunch at the Legend Restaurant. That will be at 11.30 a.m. Sign up sheet is out in the hallway. If you also want to participate in giving us cards, uh, you have also next Sunday, December 11th, to bring in the cards, as well as Saturday, December 17th, between 10.30 and 11 